was one of the most feared pitchers in baseball. Surgical, precise, calm under pressure. They didn't call Dwight Gooden Doc for nothing. 3-2 pick is swung on and missed. So I can call you Doc. Yes, Doc is fine. Doc is fine. You still use Doc? I still use Doc. And the first pitch in his major league career by Dwight Gooden, a ball. In 1984, Doc Gooden made his major league debut with the New York Mets. He was just 19 years old with his 98 mile per hour fastball. Fastball, that's all for Spike. And formidable curve. Oh, what a curveball that was. He became an immediate success. So what was it like to be up on the mound in Shea Stadium in front of tens of thousands of people? It was almost like um, being in a concert. And I'm the entertainer of the show, and I wanted to give the people what they came there for. Well, plenty of people happen to think Gooden is already a great pitcher. And in 1984, he had a banner year to prove it. He was named National League Rookie of the Year in his first season. He won the Cy Young Award, given to the best pitcher in baseball, in his second, and became the youngest starting pitcher ever in the All-Star Game. They call me Dr. Kim because I operate. I surgically remove the batter from the plate. Doc Gooden was a star. But while he was in perfect control on the field, it was a different story off the mound. I mean, being so young, so talented, finding fame and fortune, and success so quickly. What was the most difficult for you to deal with? I think the success came very fast and not being able to say no. Especially to cocaine. The first time I tried the cocaine, unfortunately it was love at the first sniff. My problem always been, not just when things are bad, I turn the drugs and alcohol, but when things are good, I turn the drugs and alcohol. Things were very good for Gooden and the Mets when they won the World Series in 1986. It was like the ultimate dream for any player, the highlight of my career, where you should be the happiest day of my life, and it was, but then three hours later, it turned into the worst day of my life. In his new book, he writes that he retreated to a Long Island flop house to celebrate the win with some cocaine. Doc Gooden partied so much that he never even made the victory parade. Watching that on TV, with a bunch of strangers, you're doing all the drugs you possibly do, you can't get high anymore, and now it's just totally, you know, you're depressed. You don't know how it got to that point. While playing baseball was his job, getting high was his vocation. Why did you need it? I thought it made me feel like the person that I wanted to be, uh, more vocal, uh, felt good inside, uh, comfortable in my own skin. Comfortable in your own skin. Why, why were you uncomfortable? I was just a shy kid, uh, just loved baseball. All I want to do is play baseball. Uh, wasn't aware of everything that goes along with that. Gooden is the youngest of six children with a stern mother and a doting father who passed his love of baseball on to his son. I remember being about six or seven, watching the games with him on Saturdays, and he would have his beer and chips. I'll have my juice and cookies or what have you. His father pushed all the distractions out of Gooden's life and allowed him to concentrate only on baseball. But when I got about 10, I remember my dad asked me, how much did I like baseball? I said, I like it a lot. He said, well, how much? I said, I like it where maybe I could play on TV. I said, OK. So from that point, he was basically going to live out his dream where at the work, he'd take me to the field. We'd do all these drills. But his father almost missed the crowning achievement of Doc's career. He had been on dialysis for his kidneys for probably 12 years. His health was failing him. Now his heart's failing him. In 1996, after more than 10 seasons with the Mets, Doc joined the Yankees, where he threw his one and only no-hitter. Lifted in the air, in the infield. It happened on the exact same night his father was having open-heart surgery. A no-hitter for Dwight Gooden. Gooden rushed to the hospital as soon as the last out was made. Walking to the hospital, my dad had the surgery. He was on life support at the time. I remember giving him the ball from the game. <clears throat> and the doctor said that, um, excuse me. <clears throat> the doctor said, you know, he saw the game. After the last out, he got the one tear in his eye. And so he ended up passing away, never coming home. But the last game he saw me pitch was the no-hitter. So that game will always be special. 
But Gooden says a supportive family, success on the playing field, and love from his hometown fans were not enough to keep him clean. But when the game was over, you know, you deal with the media, you go home. Now, whatever was going on inside, whether it was, you know, going to get high or what have you, that's when it was tough. That's when you felt real, you know, really alone. After pitching for five major league teams, Gooden retired in 2001. Did you ever pitch high? I never pitch high. Um, I know I've, I've read stories about guys playing high, pitching high. My problem with cocaine was the first night I'm doing it, I'm very happy, very up going, very jittery. Along the way, after about three or four hours, the paranoia sticks in where I probably thought the umpires was cops. <laughs> you know, I would have thought, thought, you know, everybody in the stands was cops. It just the paranoia sticks in and it wasn't fun anymore. And so there's no way possible I could have done that. He tried to get clean on multiple occasions and says he's been to rehab at least six times. But nothing stuck until... Just trying to get better. So I'm doing whatever it takes at any cost now. My life's on the line. For me first, and then my kids. Two years ago, he joined the cast of the cable TV show Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew. Doc Gooden says he's been clean and sober ever since. Part of that was removing that mask, letting the world know I am an addict, and I'm okay being an addict, and I'm going to get better. It still astounds me how long your addiction lasted. Oh, yeah. Most people would be dead by now. Yeah. yeah, I'm here for a reason, no doubt. I'm here for a reason because there's so many things I've went through in my life that people, like I say, people have died from doing less, and I'm still here. At 48 years old, he now lives in New Jersey, not far from three of his seven children, but very far from the roar of the crowd, and that's just fine with Doc Gooden. You look around, you're in a, what, two-bedroom apartment? I have more peace here than I had when I had the, you know, 12-bedroom house at one time. This is a far cry from a 12-bedroom house, <laughs> but you have what you want. I have what I want now within myself and, you know, just, I feel good about who I am. Uh, and unfortunately, all the ups and downs I went through has molded me into the man that I am today. And I'm very happy for that.